Hello and welcome to Triage, Rapid Legal Lessons for Busy Healthcare Professionals, a podcast created and produced by K&L Gates. Each episode is designed to highlight important developments in health law and analyze the impact on our clients and friends of the firm. We hope you enjoy this podcast. Welcome to Triage. My name is Gary Qualls. I litigate and arbitrate healthcare disputes. In this particular podcast, I try to provide a simplified distillation of Crescent City Surgical Center versus United Healthcare of Louisiana, a recent dispute between a healthcare provider and a payer. This case illustrates how certain claims by a provider against an out of network payer might be kept in state court and not preempted by ERISA if the provider desires. Now, to keep description simple, I will use the generic terms provider and payer rather than the party's names. In in each instance. Here, provider sued payer in state court seeking reimbursement on certain claims. Provider is out of network with payer, i.e. they have no managed care type contract between them to cover payment of all claims. Provider's complaint alleged that payer pre-authorized certain treatments at agreed upon rates through payer's online portal thus creating a contract between the parties as to those treatments. Provider also alleged that payer failed to make those agreed-upon payments. Payer removed the case to federal court, claiming that this was an ERISA case and thus properly in federal court, because ERISA preempted, allegedly, the state law claims. Provider responded, saying it was only suing in state court over the agreed-upon, i.e. contracted payments, and not suing on any non-contract claims that required derivative standing under ERISA. On that basis, provider asked the federal district court judge to remand the case back to state court. The court agreed with provider and remanded the case to state court. Now, here was the court's rationale in a nutshell. In remanding, the court emphasized several points. One, in determining ERISA preemption, Courts will focus specifically on the rights that a provider is seeking to enforce because many potential claims here could be enforced under ERISA, i.e. derivatively through the patient's assigning benefits. Those claims would be completely preempted by ERISA and properly in federal court if provider were seeking to enforce such claims. Here, however, provider was not seeking to enforce such derivative-only ERISA claims. Now, in most out-of-network situations, payers will try to shift providers' claims into federal court under the rationale that, absent an overarching managed care contract between the parties, all state law claims are preempted by ERISA. Payers appear to be doing this for two main reasons. One, ERISA payment disputes are sometimes harder for a provider to prove than disputes based on state law claims. Proving patient-based derivative standing is replete with procedural traps that have nothing to do with the merits, for example. Secondly, state law claims can offer providers more effective relief in many instances. So here are the main takeaways from this case. If providers can identify a direct contractual relationship with a payer in what is otherwise an out-of-network relationship, and that relationship imposes on the payer a non-ERISA-based legal duty to pay, then the provider can assert state court jurisdiction with more favorable state court remedies and fewer unnecessary procedural roadblocks as to those claims. Thanks for listening to this episode of Triage. I'm Gary Qualls. Have a good day. Thanks again for listening to Triage, Rapid Legal Lessons for Busy Healthcare Professionals. New episodes are available for download through iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast applications. By subscribing to Triage, you will receive timely notifications of each new episode. Also, if you have any topics that you would like to hear discussed on Triage, please don't hesitate to email triagesupport at klgates.com. We would love to hear from you.